In my previous video, I covered the Battle of Marston Moor, one of the largest battles fought on British soil, an epic clash between royalists and parliamentarians that helped determine the outcome of the Civil War. This will not be one of those videos. For this time, we shall be looking at the Siege of Latham House. Our story begins in January 1644 with Sir Thomas Fairfax. After relieving the town of Nantwich and defeating Lord Byron's army in the process, Parliament felt that Lancashire was safely in their hands. They ordered Fairfax North to support the Scottish Covenanters against the Marquis of Newcastle. On his way through Lancashire, he arrived at Latham House near Ormskirk. The owner of Latham House, James Stanley, the 7th Earl of Derby, was on the Isle of Man under the King's orders and its defence was entrusted to his French wife, Charlotte de la Tremolle. Lady Stanley had been raiding Parliament armies in the nearby area and upon realising Fairfax was heading her way, made sure to fortify the house and turn it into a fortress. Latham House was a small fortress with nine towers alongside its six feet deep walls and a complimentary 24 foot wide moat as well. Lady Stanley was joined by her 300 esteemed guests who were all kind enough to bring their muskets with them for the party. When Fairfax arrived on the scene in February, he requested Lady Stanley surrendered the castle and the supplies inside. This request was denied as she didn't want to surrender her husband's honour but did ask for a week to consider the offer. During this time, the Countess began playing mind games on the parliamentarians, such as reminding Fairfax of her social rank and demanding it should be respected, and then inviting Fairfax in for negotiations. She did offer to end the raiding parties in exchange for keeping the house, but this was denied. Once the week had come to an end, she rejected the demand to surrender with this statement. Although a woman and a stranger, Divorced from my friends and robbed of my estate, I am ready to receive your utmost violence, trusting in God for protection and deliverance. Fairfax had already surveyed the castle and decided that it wasn't worth wasting time in the lengthy siege of a place that held no strategic value. But one colonel, Alexander Rigby, was determined to reduce this symbol of defiance like he had already done to Sir John Gurlington's castle at Thurland in 1643. When Fairfax heard the passion within Rigby, he felt compelled to do the only thing a reasonable man would do, take his army and leave Rigby to his own devices. Although the house was a formidable obstacle, it would be no difficulty for the master of strategy Rigby himself. He had a force of 2,000 men against just 300 defenders. It would surely fall in no time. Like any master strategist, Rigby brought up his artillery pieces and ordered them to bombard the walls. However, as Latham House lay in a hollow, the guns were positioned on a downward slope and the shot rolled out before it could be fired. But Rigby, master strategist that he was, decided to move the guns onto the flat ground instead. However, this also brought them into range of Lady Darby's snipers and the gun crews kept getting shot every time they tried to fire. This would not be a problem for the master strategist himself, who quickly ordered trenches to be dug all around the castle. This succeeded in protecting the gun crews from musket fire and the bombardment could finally commence. After days of bombardment, Rigby saw the devastating impact the guns had against the walls. It just turned out to be absolutely nothing. The most they had achieved were a few dents in the walls. Just to make matters worse, Rigby's force had burned through most of their powder supply and would have to limit their bombardment in order to conserve powder. But like any master strategist, Rigby had a backup plan. In his back pocket, he had a huge mortar capable of launching a 100 pound stone ball, and it was time to use it. Rigby donned his Darth Sidious cape and prepared to make the royalists witness the firepower of this fully armed and operational battle weapon. Unfortunately for Rigby, this mortar wasn't the third Death Star and proved to be just as useless as all the other artillery pieces he had brought with him. After another day of pointless bombardment, the Royalist garrison started to get bored of watching Rigby's masterful plans and decided to spice up the situation a bit more. That night, they snuck out of the castle, walked into the parliamentarian camp, knocked over the mortar and stuffed rubbish down the barrel. How nice of Rigby to let that happen. Eventually, the mortar was cleaned and the siege continued. 
Two weeks after this incident, Rigby's fortunes were turning in his favour as a large supply of proper mortar shells were soon to arrive at Latham House, and with this, the walls would surely be breached now. But surely the Royalists would try to sabotage his mortar again before the new shells could be used. Rigby returned to his tent to ponder this matter and devise a cunning plan to guard the mortar from further sorties. That night, he had his solution and sprinted back to the mortar to implement his genius plan, only to discover that the Royalists had already walked into the camp and casually brought the mortar back inside with them. He probably should have remembered to put guards around the mortar this time. The siege continued into May, but Rigby was still no closer to taking the castle than he had been at the beginning. By now, he had received news that Stockport had been sacked by Prince Rupert, who was on his way to relieve York. Rigby finally decided to abandon the siege, seeing as he couldn't break the thick walls or the iron will of Lady Derby herself. He packed up his things and headed straight to Bolton, which was sacked by Prince Rupert the next day anyway and Rigby had to flee with what was left. Prince Rupert was greeted at Latham House by Lady Derby with a grateful hug. To add salt into Rigby's wounds, Rupert asked Lady Derby to surrender the castle to him, which she accepted. The castle would be managed by Colonel Edward Rawsthorne. Lady Derby was reunited with her husband on the Isle of Man, having defended her family honour and becoming a symbol of royalist resistance. However, this victory would soon become a hollow one. The castle would surrender a year later under Rupert's colonel. The Earl of Derby was executed in Bolton in 1651. Lady Derby would lose her family's home and Prince Rupert was defeated at Marston Moor, where a regiment was led by a certain master of strategy. Rigby had his revenge. Thank you for watching me bully Rigby for an entire video, be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and feel free to comment on what I should do next. See you next time.